Hey guys, Jason from CNC Labs here today, customer support guy, but I'm here to show you how to install the auto tensioning backlash nuts. Uh, we finally got them in stock again, and uh, here's a little down on how to make it work. Uh, should only take you about maybe half an hour if you're taking your time or depending on your type of beverage. Uh, what you do need is you will need your Allen keys, depending on if your machine comes with the uh, brass acme nuts or the black clamping nuts. It will depend on the Allen key you need. Uh, you may need to use the wrench that comes with. Um, if you don't have the cool bottle opening kind, I apologize, but it comes with the new machines. So uh, let's get started on this. The first thing you wanna do is that you wanna move your machine to the back um, where the motors are and to the side where the motors are. That is the easiest way to, uh, it's the quickest way to get your backlash nuts off. We'll go a little bit more in detail as we get closer into it. All right, so join me. So first things first that we want to do is have our machine moved all the way to the back where the motors are. This will make it a little bit easier and quicker when we are dealing with taking off the old backlash nuts and putting on the new backlash nuts. So what you first want to do is you got the gantry to the back. I'm going to come in and I'm going to uh, disconnect the hardware here. And we're going to do it on both sides. At the same time, uh, we'll disconnect them, uh, make just removing the gantry and everything else just a lot easier. The reason for the backlash nuts to be closer to the motor is that's where I'm going to disconnect from. And it's just a lot easier to unthread when they are closer to there. If you started here and you're trying to disconnect all the way to the back, it makes it a lot more complicated. The uh, reason I'm not taking it from the front, even though it feels easier, is in order to move the lead screw out of the way, I would either have to remove the whole lead screw out of the way, or I would have to take off the motors at the back. Here's just an easier methodology for me. I've got the gantry off and moved to the front now so I can access all the stuff that's happening in the back. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be removing just the lead screw side of the coupler mount. Uh, just this bolt right here that is not coming into focus. And then we'll slide this, we'll rotate the lead screw so that this will come off. Uh, don't forget, grab your hardware and hold on to it. Now that I've got that undone, I can just slide that forward and this will allow me to spin the backlash nut off. Super simple, easy peasy. You'll be doing this for your both sides, uh, the Y axis as well as the X axis, it acts the same way. Now, one trick, uh, you wanna put your nylon lock nut washers from the um, old backlash nuts if you have them. These are M5 nylon lock, nylon lock washers. And on this one, the easiest way is to put this in, uh, not on the spring-loaded side, but on the chamfered side, it'll go on a lot easier. Installation's just the, re just the reverse. Uh, one thing that I recommend doing which will save you some time, is to apply a little piece of tape on the back side of this during the installation. Because when you go and you put this against the wall, it's really hard to hold on to those in position. And it's just a lot easier when you um, install your, screw, your hardware. I'll be back in a second to, put, to show you that. And I'm back, I'm back with a uh, roll of masking tape, super simple. What I do is I put my uh, nut in with the thread in first. It allows some of the threads to catch on the screw when you're putting it in. And it's just kind of a little bit helpful with um, getting the installation move a little bit quicker. So once again, thread in, a little piece of tape on the back side. This is complicated when I'm doing it in front of a camera.
And it's just to hold this in place while I put the gantries on. I'm going to hold this here for right now. Actually, I will insert this back into my, into my motor coupler, and then I will tighten it up. I'm gonna to go to the other side now, and I'll come back to this side once I'm done. Okay, so I've got the other side done as well. Same thing, little piece of tape on the back side to keep the nuts from falling out while I um, install the, the screws. So I'm gonna slide this forward and move it up. I'm gonna slide in front, and it's a little hard to see, but I'm gonna to try to align up the, the old holes with the new holes. You may have to move it a little bit forward in case it's not, and then just look through. I'll get my face out of here. You don't need to see that. Once the screws are inserted, tighten with the Allen key until the split washer is compressed. Do not over tighten. That's it for the Y axis. The X axis will be the exact same. Now we're going to move on to doing the Z axis. Sorry about the change in audio, I was busy in the shop when I was filming this. For this Z axis, you're going to need the wrench that comes with your machine, uh, especially if you've got the limit switches installed, as well as the Allen key. Remove the two screws that are holding the gantry plate onto the backlash nut. I find it's easier to hold the nylon lock nut in place while I undo the screws. If installed, you'll want to remove the limit switch now using the provided wrench. I put the nut and washer back onto the limit switch while I'm doing the next steps just so I don't lose them. For the next step, I'm going to remove the two screws that hold the motor mount plate onto the gantry. This is going to make changing the anti-backlash nuts so much easier. With the motor mount free, we can now lift it up and remove the lead screw out from behind the Z-axis router mount. Unthread the anti-backlash nuts as you see shown here. Okay, grab the other replacement spring-loaded nut and you're going to want to thread it on so that the springs are facing to the bottom of the machine. Thread the nut so that it's about two thirds up the lead screw. Sorry for the blurriness, but just like the X and the Y, we're going to use a little piece of masking tape to hold the nylon lock nuts in place so that we can install our screws with ease. And just like before, when installing the nuts, make sure that the dome side faces out. Apply the tape and then rotate the backlash nuts so that the nylon lock nuts face the rail. We can now reinstall the motor mount by putting the lead screw in behind the Z-axis gantry plate and aligning the holes up with the front so that we can put the screws into it. Go ahead and reinstall your limit switches. 
Once we're completed with the installation of the backlash nuts, go ahead and revisit our page on setting up your limit switches to make sure that they're properly dialed in. I've linked to the page in the description below. Please pay attention to the orientation of the backlash nut, especially if you have limit switches. It's important that it goes on in this direction. Raise the motor mount and install the two screws that go into the backlash nut. As always, don't over tighten them. Go ahead and remove the tape from the back of the backlash nut. Make sure a flat side of the lock nut for the limit switch is facing the backlash nut. This will provide you a little extra space if you have the limit switches. As I mentioned earlier, the x-axis installation is the exact same way as the y, except for one notable, the orientation of the springs. They should be facing towards the router and not towards the motor, as in the case of the y-axis. Same as before, remove the two screws holding the backlash nut onto the gantry plate. Set the screws aside, you're going to use them later on. Loosen the fastener, holding the lead screw in place on the motor coupler. Once it's loosened, slide the lead screw out and rotate it to pull off the anti-backlash nut. We're going to reuse the nuts and bolts that were on the old backlash nut and insert them into the new spring loaded nut. Make sure that the dome side of the nut is facing outwards. Apply a piece of tape to keep the nuts in place while you are installing. Otherwise they may fall out and it's frustrating once you have the lead screw installed. This is a reminder to make sure that you install with the spring side of the nut facing towards the router, otherwise you will lose some cutting area because it will protrude past the gantry plate. Please note, the screws holding the springs in place are non-adjustable, the nuts themselves are self-adjusting and there's no adjustments to be made. You can now go and reinstall all the components and tighten all the fasteners. As always, with the backlash nuts, don't over tighten, only until the split washer is compressed. Remove that last piece of tape from the machine and you're ready to run. I'm going to show you the process for those with the 48 by 30. You need to purchase one T12 spring-loaded backlash nut in order to fit on your machine. 
the process is the exact same as we just saw for the 30 by 30 and the 12 by 30. Everything's the exact same, so I've sped this process up. And once again, on the X-axis installation, make sure the springs face the router, otherwise you will lose cutting area. Uh, once again, no need to make any adjustments to these nuts. They adjust themselves. And that concludes the spring loaded backlash nut installation video. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, and come check us out at cnc.com.